last time on D&D Minus. You have a friend of ours, goes by the name of Floon Puff. Yes, he was acquired by us for a high-profile client. Um, you are here to pay his ransom? Oh, hell no. There are two things you should know about me, adventurers. One, I am never above a square deal. And two, I am a liar. And with that, you notice that she has raised her feet slightly from the floor in her chair, and she's holding her hand to a bright white rune on the side of her desk. And before you can react, electricity pulses through your bodies and you black out. Looks like our heroes are in quite the pickle. Will they get out or will they run out of brine? D&D Minus. You wake up inside the room you saw marked kidnapping on the way in. You are divided on the two large cages on either side of the room. And in between you is the third cage with the young man in the very fine clothes who is still asleep. And as you're sort of coming to your senses, I would also give you a long rest here, except you didn't do anything that requires it. So, <laughs> but feel rested. Your characters are rested, just so you know. So just as you wake up, the door opens and Sarah Flair steps inside. Who's in which cage? Snedrick and Dave are on the left side of the room and Bridget and Claw are on the right side of the room. Solid. I high-five Bridget. Nice. <laughs> Do you think we should high-five Snedrick? Do you want to high-five too? <laughs> um, but just as you're coming awake, even before you can high-five each other based on your cage placement, the door opens and Sarah Flair steps inside. I'm going to pat myself down and see if I have my snogs bane still or if they took mm, that yeah. they have taken all of your belongings oh shit wow. you don't have weapons you don't have anything however you can see them they are piled on the far wall all of your belongings all your money all your magic items everything are piled on the far wall anyway sarah flair steps inside and she says gentlemen lady and um bird forgive <laughs> my deception uh but I did not realize I had people with such famous friends among us. And she reaches into her jacket and she pulls out the paper bird that each of you got from Blade Vigil. She says, if the man who sent you was truly Blade Vigil, then surely the measly 500 gold pieces ransom I demanded was far too low. However, because I am a kind and generous person, I have set each of your ransoms at 500 gold. So I assume you should expect your release soon with a patron like Blade Vigil behind you. And then she reaches into her pocket again, pulls out one of the paper birds that Blade sent you. She whispers into it, writes something on it, folds it up, and it flies high out of the window across the catwalk that makes up the upper part of the room and through just a tiny crack in the window. And then she turns to you and says, in the meantime, I suggest Jufar Make yourselves comfortable. And then she walks out of the room, closes the door, and all four guards sit there sort of staring angrily at you. All right, Mr. Guard, she I, I want to just be clear here. She said that she wanted us to make ourselves comfortable. And as I'm sure you're aware, you can't really do that if you don't have your snogs mane. Now, as you'll see, my snogs mane is sitting right over there in the corner. Uh, I would split it with you if you would give it to me. Look. You guys already got me in trouble with Sarah because of your very persuasive argument about the shock cage earlier tonight. I'm not doing none of you no favors. I'm, I mean, I wasn't even in the room when they did that. I, it's fine, I guess. You're, you're all together. Start, I know fine. now. Right. I know you're all together. All right. And they're sort of playing cards and talking amongst themselves. Hmm. You guys think I could just like blast them with my Eldritch Blast or something and, and then we'll get out? I wouldn't right now. I'm going to cast Thaumaturgy and make it look like uh, the the shock gate is on fire. All right. Great. I will roll perception checks for the guards. Do I have to roll something for that? Nope. I think that's just a spell. Nope. Yep. All right. Cool. Yep. 
That's it. Okay, yeah. So the first guard, he starts to look where he sort of stands up and the second guard goes, remember, people have magic powers, Dave. They have magic powers. <laughs> Dave goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Magic powers. Hey, hey, hey. Whoever's doing that, cut it out. And then he sits down and goes back to playing cards again. I'm going to uh, manifest the the door to look like a giant. The fire's going to turn into the shape of a giant middle finger. <laughs> oh, real classy. Real classy, whoever did that. All right. You come in here. You lie to me in my place of business. Now you make rude gestures. That's fine. That's fine. He's got three fours, y'all. He's got three fours. Oh, and this guy's ruining the game. I can this see guy's it ruining the game. <laughs> this is the He's worst. bluffing. I wish we didn't work for such a classy gang, because in my old gang, I'll tell you, we would have given you a, a real s swirly. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Is that where you stick your tongue in my butt and go around in circles? Because you can still do that. I mean, if you're waiting for permission. No, it's where you put someone's head down a toilet, but... I don't know if toilets exist because <laughs> fantasy, I, they, they exist. They exist. And you put someone's head in the toilet. Oh. You know what a swirly is. I'm ignoring you. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Um, well, how do you guys feel about me uh, waking up this floon paw for, over here? Yeah, uh, definitely wake him up. All right, sure. I'm going to make hey, a loud noise. Would next anyone to like to make a perception check and I yes. don't know, fucking look around the room? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to look around the room you're all held in prison in? <laughs> okay. Just for shits and Nat giggles. Nat 20! Nat 20! <laughs> Nat 20. Well, good thing that you thought of that all on your own because you notice <laughs> there is a door on the back wall marked management. Next to that door, there is a large red bell and an empty catwalk against the wall above it. You can also see in the far corner what appears to be a diorama of the three cages you're inside sitting on a table in the corner of the room. What? Okay, can I wake him up now? Yep, you can wake up Flume Puff now. <laughs> all right, I'm going to make a loud noise So next we've to all got some uh, what seems to be useless information from looking around. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> sure glad I looked up. Sure glad Good I job, looked though. around. Good job. Look, I keep forgetting my character accent. Um, all right, yes, I'm going to make a loud noise next to Flume Puff's head. Oh, oh my goodness, that's that's dreadful. What, what happened? What the, what? The, who are you? What the tooth? Are you Floon Puff? I am. Why, why was there a loud noise next to my head? Because I wanted to wake you up. Oh, I'm sorry. Could you not think of any other human possible way to wake a person? Not really. Anyway, uh... Yes, it's me. I'm Floon Puff. So how did you get he get here? Who are you? I am the person who's supposed to be prisoners as well. <laughs> Sorry. Are you brigands? Ah. Uh. And then he sort of leans to the edge of the cage towards you, Dave, especially, and goes, I say, Dragonborn. Dragonborn. Yeah. What? Are you are you are you a brigand? What what is a brigand? Oh, like a scallywag. A camflaster? A sham shall he say. He's a scallywag. I'll go ahead and tell Ooh, you, man. Oh, a scallywag. I was hoping to meet one on my adventure. Cool. Your, um... your adventure? Well, yes. I'll tell you what. I've been on, on a pirate ship before, but I no longer do that. So I guess I could be considered a scallywag? Do you want us to be scallywags? Is that helpful right now? <laughs> I'm just excited to meet people. I've been stuck in these cages for two days now. Now, about that. Why did you get stuck in a cage? How, what, did you, what did you do to get stuck in here? Oh, who are you? We are the people who were sent to uh, rescue you, but you see how well that turned out for us, so... I don't believe you. I'm actually much more clever than people give me credit for. Mm. If you're so, so sure, who sent you after me? Blade Vigil. Oh my goodness, you are here to rescue me! <laughs> my goodness! Yeah, this is all part of the plan, man. This is going just mm -hmm. as we... We, we just noticed that diorama over there. We're figuring that factors into things. Oh. So, you know, it's all part of the Are plan. Are you planning a prison break? Aren't you? No, no, I've just been sitting here waiting for someone to rescue me. Lucky you. This is sure is your lucky day. What do you do? What is your, like, you know, job? I am the son of Helifesta, Poff. You know, I was traveling here to meet Blade Vigil. He had, and he sort of leans you in and then realizes he can't sort of whisper. So he sort of sits in the middle of the cage and tries to whisper out both sides of his mouth at the same time, he says. <laughs> he had requested a certain item from my family that he said was great 
of importance. However, on the evening we met, he left me halfway through my revelry. Now, before I knew it, this bawdy brown-haired lass was on my lap, making all sorts of promises, you know, and we drank and we danced, and well, I woke up here. The good news is, friends, I have managed to secrete the item somewhere where these dregs of society have been unable to locate it. Did you stick it up your butt? Ass? You're talking about ass? No, it's not up my ass. That's horrible. Why would you say that? No. Can, can I roll Can I roll yeah. a perception check to know it's in his ass? You may roll a perception check. As, as he says no, the guard turns to you guys and goes, one, I can absolutely a thousand percent hear you. This is insane. Uh, and this two, isn't about you. It's it's not in his ass. We checked like a couple of times. It's not in his ass. I told you it's not in my ass. But you can roll a perception check. He's bluffing this time, yeah. y'all. He's bluffing. He ain't got shit. In Insight his hand. to see if he was bluffing. Uh, That's that one. That run. <laughs> never mind. He's definitely bluffing. It's definitely in his ass, Anna. It's one hundred. It You've never ass. been sure. Bridget is never more sure of anything than it's in his ass. Uh, do I you want to roll a perception well check? <laughs> uh, does someone else want to roll a perception check? Dave no. mentioned pretty, he wanted I'm, to. I will. I'm pretty confident that it's in his butt still. All right, I'm going to also roll a perception check, even though we already know this. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I got a three. Yeah, you're also sure it's in his butt. You're also <laughs> okay. sure it's in his butt. <laughs> hey, I'm, I don't mean to pry here, man. I agree it's probably not up your butt like you say, say so, but what is this item of great importance? Oh, I'll tell you what, my good sir. Help me escape from this prison, and I may tell you. Can you just say it out loud? Do you know Dragonborn language? Just say it in that language. The guard just said he can hear us. I don't speak any languages, and it's actually very important that the guards not find out what I've been carrying, because I don't believe they know. Can you write it down? I'm going to do a perception check on the room again, mm -hmm. and particularly how close, like, the catwalk is to the tops of these... These cages. Yeah, you know that from your previous thing. It's about 20 feet above the top of your cage. Well, fuck me. So I All pull right. Snedrick aside and I whisper very quietly so that no one can hear us. He is not oh, no, in no, the no, same cage as you. Same cage. That All right. if we can figure out how to con the guards into playing cards with us, we may be able to escape. Why is that? Because they'll let us out of the cage to play cards. Oh. Hey, do okay. you guys want to play cards with us? <laughs> I feel like no, thank you. That, that would be fun for all of us to play cards. <laughs> nah, we're playing cards with each other. What game are you playing? <laughs> it's fantasy. Fantasy poker. poker's so much better with a bigger table. <laughs> you guys probably aren't even any good. Yeah, I like a nice forehand game. There's four Ooh. of you. Ah, uh, there's four of us. Yep. Eight man game. Teams. You guys probably aren't any good. Yeah, I appreciate it. Wait a second. Uh, how? Okay, so uh, have in that in that perception check, did I see where the keys to these um these cages are? They 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 don't actually have doors. Uh, they appear to just be like large bird cages without the bottoms that have somehow you assume magically been just lowered on top of you. Uh, so there's no doors. The bars are close together, and there doesn't seem to be a way out through the ceiling or anything like that. All you can see is the small diorama in the corner that matches exactly the cages as they are, the alarm, the walkway. So it would actually just be like a strength check to heave this shit off of me, right? Yeah, but they're pretty big. Uh, you do not have the strength to lift this giant metal cage off. Do you think two of us would? I do not think so, no. All right, so here's what I'm thinking, Dave. Yeah. I'm thinking that the way they get these cages up and down has something to do with that diorama up there. That yep. makes sense. And if somehow we can knock these cages over up here, these little ones, our cages would fall over. You think those are like little voodoo cages? Oh. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm not saying I don't think that. I really don't know about the physics of this world yet. Right. I'm still figuring that shit out. So if we like blast that table holding the little diorama with a spell and it falls over our large cages might fall over? I mean, e e either that or will it really pissed off them guards and that guy's been kind of a dick where he's talking about the swirly. They're kind of pissed already. Uh, I'm just saying, I don't know if I, 
I could never do this without my magic wand, which is not in the cage with me. But maybe uh, it could help to make um, the room uh, so that nobody can see in it. Mm. Does um, anybody have any? Uh, oh, if if I had my magic wand, I don't use a magic <laughs> wand. Uh, then I could make a twenty foot radius around me of sphere sphere of fog. Um, and nobody could see what we were doing, but the problem is we couldn't yeah, see that what would, we were doing. I, I'm not really sure. But it's a good okay. thing you don't have that wand. I'm not sure that. Does anybody it. have telekinesis? I have wings. <laughs> we can make a gust of wind. Do you think wings are similar to telekinesis? No, no, Did no. You... But we can make a gust of wind with your wings. Mm -hmm. How far away is this diorama? Uh, it's about forty feet. That's a big gust of wind. Ooh. Go ahead and make yeah, that gust no. of wind. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> Maybe you could, at least you could blow the cars off their table and fuck with them. <laughs> All right, I have a, a magic missile. I don't know what that is, but I think I could probably knock the fuck out of a... That'll oh, work. fuck yeah, you could. That goes, that goes 120 feet. You guys ready to fight these guys? Game on. Yep. I mean, we don't have any weapons and we're in well, cages. I don't think we're exactly ready. For the weapons are in the room. True that. Most of the weapons are in the room and most of us are, you know... Magic users. That's true. That's true. And All I right, have like that, do the missile weapons. I, I don't really know what that spell is. I mean, is that is that what that is? Is it something that I could like throw up there and like destroy their little diorama? You you could absolutely shoot a, a magic missile at those dioramas and send those cages flying. That's absolutely one of the things you could do with your magic abilities. All right, I'm gonna. Uh, you've got a ton of magic abilities. You could do that. You could do a bunch of stuff. Yep. I could also charm a person, which seems like the kind of thing that you'd want to try before this. But yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm going to do... I'm going to... Up to okay. you. Yeah, I'm going to try to do that. I don't know how I would do that, though. What if I challenge them to like a game of rock, paper, scissors, and then you do that? <laughs> Ch uh, are you doing magic missile or charm person? Uh, magic missile. Will you read the description just so that people know what you're doing? Oh, oh okay. Yeah. You create three glowing darts of magical force. Each dart hits a creature of your choice that you can see within range. A dart deals the such and such damage to its target. I'm throwing them at cages in a diorama, so. All right, so you're hitting the th all three cages? Yeah. All right, is there a direction you're trying to knock them? Let's go towards the guards. Sure. All right. Oh, yeah. Um, great, so you cast magic missile. And sure enough, the moment the cages tip over, the large cages that you are inside tip over as well. However, because you hit them with a magic missile, they actually go flying. And the guards, I did not expect this, but the guards are going to make dexterity saving throws to try to... Oh! Duh! Uh... <laughs> okay. Are the guards dead? So three of the guards are crushed underneath the cage that Floon was inside. One managed to dodge out of the way, the one who you've been talking to the entire time. But he draws his sword and let's roll for initiative. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for listening to D&D &D Minus. Really appreciate you listening to the show. If you're enjoying it, why not head over to iTunes? Give us a five-star review, especially now early on in the show. The more five-star reviews we get, the more chances that new people find out about our shows who didn't hear about us from our other programs and stuff. So uh, it only takes a second, but it makes a huge difference for the podcast. And if you're loving the show and you want more of it or you want extras or all that cool stuff, why not head over to patreon.com forward slash D and D minus. That's all spelled out. D Patreon.com D and D minus. We've got a Dungeon Master QA up there where I tell you a little about what I use to create this campaign and just give some general tips on running a game if you haven't run one before. And we should have one of our short games up by the time you listen to this. If you if it's not there yet, then it will be very, very soon because that's the kind of extra content that patrons are gonna get. Right, so thank you again so much for listening to the show, and now, back to it. So everybody roll... That's a d20. Everyone roll a d20 for me. And then you will have an initiative bonus, and it'll be at the top of your uh, thing. 
when you add that to the. Can, can I use the 17 that I rolled before that I didn't have to roll? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. We'll let you use that. Uh, All right. Good, because I had rolled a four. <laughs> All right, so that, that would be 19 when I have my. I got a five two. plus zero. Oh, yeah. And I got a nine plus three. Uh, Snedrick, you were up first, anyways. All right. Uh, can I use my thunder wave? Okay. Give me a second. And will you read that spell description so people know what that is? A wave of thunderous force sweeps out from you. Each creature in a 15 foot. Oh, okay, so wait a minute. Does this mean that, like, I would hit these guys? If it's each creature in a 15 foot cube We're originating from me. They're standing behind you. Yeah, they're standing behind you. So Okay. Um, each creature must make a constitution saving throw. On a failed save, a creature takes 2d8 thunder damage and is pushed 10 feet away from you. On a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage and isn't pushed. In addition, unsecure objects that are completely within the area are affected, and the area of effect are automatically pushed 10 feet away from you by the spell's effect. Okay, so what's that saving throw he needs to make? Uh, 13. 13. Okay. And he saves. Boo. So he takes 2d8, so roll a d8 twice, and then cut that in half. Okay, I rolled a 5 and a 9, so that'd be 7. 7 damage. All right. And as you do that, a second guard runs out onto the catwalk above you, holding a crossbow. That's fucking And says, hey, what happened in here? And he is going to aim his crossbow. Uh, sorry, he has a spear. A guard walks out and he has a spear and he is going to aim it at Claw. Of course. I'm going to say after he says what happened in here, I'm, I'm going to say, that guy was losing at cars and then crushed all of them with these this, these giant cages. I don't believe you. Let's fight. <laughs> okay. It was worth it was worth a try, I reckon. It absolutely was. <laughs> uh he rolls a 13 plus 3, 16. Does that hit? What am I looking at? Armor? Armor class, yeah. Yeah, I have a 13. All right. He does four damage to you. Okay. And claw is up next. Uh, so I attack with my talons on the first guard. The the one who's on the ground level, yeah? Yep. Great. Uh, so I roll a d20, right? You are attacking with your quarterstaff, I assume? I thought we didn't have our weapons yet. Oh, you don't. That's true. You're making an unarmed strike. So Yeah, but I have talons, so it's like a Maybe specific, attack like, him with no. your yeah, throat it's... like you did with that bat earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it's slashing. So I have like a built-in weapon, right? Yeah, you have your, your talents. So, yeah, you roll a, a d20. Uh, 14. Do I add anything to that? Uh, Yeah, you add plus five. Okay, so 14 plus five. Yep, that'll hit. Okay, cool, yeah. So, four plus three, seven. Seven damage. All right, and you just, you rake your talons down the front of this guy's face and catch both of his eyeballs, which just pop out of oh. his skull. And he falls forward 100% dead. Claw. Claw, you should try to catch the eyeballs. Can I quickly, like, try and intimidate the other guard with the eyeballs on my hands or no? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, throw well, the eyeballs you need to at him. Well, you need to catch throw the, the eyeballs, eyeballs at him. Or hit him with a bat, you know, just I like, mean, psh. he did it with his claw. It's his oh, hand. Yeah. So, so you are a monk, which means as a bonus action, you get... Um, oh no, that's only a melee attack, so you can't, you can't actually throw the eyeballs at him. Melee? Which, melee. Oh melee my God. or melee. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> uh, but no, you can't throw his eyeballs at him, which would be sweet, okay. but you can't do that. Okay, no worries. All right. That is Claw. Uh, Dave, it is your turn. And, uh, actually before you do, another guard comes in. The catwalk on the other side. What's he armed with? Uh, he also has a spear. Okay. I'm going to run over to the pile of our weapons and grab my blunderbuss to begin with. All right. All right. So that's a move and an action? Wait, no, 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 right? no. That's just a move. Mm, that's a move and an action. Move yeah. and an action to pick up a weapon. It's almost like you're a fucking warlock and you have those magic powers. So I pretend like I'm running over to my blunderbuss. And they're like, oh, he's going to grab his blunderbuss. And then I like, while they think that's happening, I shoot them with, uh, I shoot the guy with Eldritch Blast. Yeah. 
Okay, so yeah. you are which guy? There are two guards. Uh, there's only one on the catwalk, yeah. isn't there? No, there's yeah, two. there's one, two, two on the catwalk now. One, one just came. A out. second one just entered, mm -hmm. and neither of them have taken any damage. We just took out the. Oh, there's two on the catwalk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How close are they? They're on opposite sides. One came in from one door of the catwalk. The other came in from the other. And the catwalk is twenty feet up. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna. And what weapons do they have? Spears. They both have spears. Okay. But one Terrible already, for threw, a one already threw his spear, didn't he? No. Nope. Yeah. Oh, he did. So yeah. one's unarmed. Uh, okay, yeah. I'm gonna Eldritch Blast the one that does have a spear. Okay, Eldritch Blasting the new thing. Great. Roll a d20. Ten. Ten. That does not hit. You aim. Your hand starts to crackle with arcane energy. You can sort of feel the hellfire billowing up inside you, but you just don't quite know how your spells work yet. So you blow like a giant fist-sized hole in the wall next to the guard's head. Nice. So we can get out using that later. <laughs> 20 feet up. Yeah, sure. And fist size. <laughs> Bridget, it is your turn. All right. I am going to use Sacred Flame on the one with a spear. Oh. And that means that he needs to do a dexterity saving throw. And he needs to beat a 13. 20. Natural 20. He just... Uh. Easily dives out of the way of your spear. Oh, come at me. I hope, I hope he fucking throws that spear at me. Right. Wait, no, never mind. I don't hope he throws that away from me. Okay, it is the quote-unquote unarmed guard's turn. He reaches to his back and pulls out another throwing spear. Great. And yeah, of course. he didn't mention that. he's going to throw it at Bridget. No, oh, I can't do my, uh, my um, I can't do my counterattack. And he is that going sucks. to roll a... Nine? That does not hit. Does not hit. So he throws the spear eh, down near your feet. <laughs> <laughs> now I have a spear. Who needs a spear? <laughs> it is Snedrick's turn. All right. Can I use my thunder wave again? Or does I have to like build back up or something? No, you have two spell slots. This will be the last first level spell that you can use, but you can use you it. You have a can trip. All right. I don't, I don't think so. No. Wait. I, you do, yeah. You should. have a, uh, you have ray of frost and shock and grasp. Okay, well I can't use uh, shock and grasp. All right, well fire didn't work so well on him. I'm gonna try my ray of frost on him. Nice. All right, excellent. So Code of cold. Uh, roll a. Uh, which one are you going for? Uh let's see. Oh, they're on opposite sides of the thing, aren't they? Yeah. Um, I will go for the one that uh, everybody else. Or the the one that just threw shit at Bridget. One okay, nice. Roll a d twenty. Fourteen plus five is nineteen. That'll hit. Do uh, roll a d eight for me. Two damage. Nice. Yeah, you shoot a ray of frost, and it it doesn't quite hit, but it it like sl slashes across his face, and he's like, Argh! you get him. He's got like a spot of frostbite on his face now. Guard number one is gonna go again. And he is going to throw at Bridget again. Oh, fuck and that guy. He is going to roll a 10. Doesn't hit. Does not hit. So he throws a spear at your feet. Uh, you know, two spear at your feet. I have some notes about your marksmanship. <laughs> Look, it's hard to be up here. And the, the other guy's got the crossbows in the in the growing room, but they're going to be here any second. They're going to they're going to show you what's what. I'll tell you right now. Excellent. All right, Claw, your turn. Okay, so is there a way up to the catwalk from where we are? Um, you can fly. Try to you can't fly, but it is high enough that you could make an athletics trek and try to jump up there or an acrobatics one? Or an acrobatics check, either of those. Okay. Can I do a stealthy acrobatics jump? So they don't see <laughs> nope, me get up. They there? are looking at you okay. with their eyes. <laughs> okay, cool. So you can an hide and then try, but <laughs> um, <laughs> I wouldn't. I would just go go for it. Will you fly me up there right, also? Well, Grab I'll... me. <laughs> oh, so he finally fucking admits he can't fucking fly. No, I just don't want to. I'm <laughs> tired and I want to be flown. Um, so I'll do an acrobatics check to get up onto the catwalk. Perfect. Do it. Uh, what is that? Twenty. D twenty. 13 plus 5. 18? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not elegant. It's not great, but you do it. You make it up onto the catwalk. Um, 
You, you scramble. kick your little birdie legs for yep. like five seconds trying to get up there. But you are on the catwalk and you are not near either of them. You're in the center of the catwalk between oh. the two of them now. Okay. Flanked. That's no good. And that's my entire turn, right? Uh, no, you have an action as well. Okay. Uh, then I will uh, attack. I don't care which one. <laughs> okay. Nice. The one who is hurt or the one who's not hurt? Oh, the, uh, the one that's hurt. Great. How are you going to attack? Now, l- I, let me ask. You said that if I do an unarmed strike, I get a bonus action? You cannot do an unarmed strike because they are f- too far away from you. Okay. However, you do have a ranged weapon. You have a dart. No, but it's, throw. I don't have it because it's on in the, the ground. pile. The oh, bottom. it is in the pile on the ground. Yeah. So if I'm, if how far from me are they? They are about... I would say the whole room is about 40 feet. So I would say there's one about 15 feet away, 20 feet away, one about 15 feet away, 20 away. So I would say they're both about 15 feet away from you. Okay. So I can't attack either of them right now. You cannot. Okay. Well, fuck. Uh, Let me tell you the things that you can do. You can take a dash action, which will let you move uh, again, and then you could get close to them. You can dodge which means any attacks, until the start of your next turn, any attack roll made against you has disadvantage Mm -hmm. if you can see the attacker. Um, You can also try to hide. Let's do dodge. All right, you're going to dodge. Do it stealthily. (laughs) Is that a 20 again? You are, no, you don't have to do anything. You just dodge. Okay, cool. You're just just preparing yourself to have spears thrown at you. (laughs) Okay, good. Uh, However much one can do that. While I'm doing this, you guys should grab your damn weapons. Oh, I, that's my plan. Uh, n- well, we're still in initiative, so and they don't need to grab theirs. I think we should just try to kill them first. It's Dave's turn. I really hope we don't have another battle, so you guys. We are don't out of spells. need weapons. You're the only one that needs a weapon. No, but if we have another <laughs> battle. You guys are going to be out of spells. I don't. I I haven't used my spell slot yet. Me neither. Okay. Yeah, you used Eldritch Fist. It's a cantrip. Yeah, that's the cantrip. Oh, okay, cool. Man, it'd be helpful if we if I if Eldritch we knew Fist. I, I love it. <laughs> okay. I would like to run over to the pile of weapons, grab all of them, and then throw them like all at once, and they all <laughs> go so to everybody. That is so many actions. That is so many actions. Also, you don't need to run over there yet. You are there, right? Because you ran over to the weapon, pretended you were gonna pick it up, and instead did an Eldritch Blast. I was already there. So you're at the weapons. Okay. So you want to pick up the weapons, which would be your action, and Try and simultaneously throw them to <laughs> all the other characters around you. Why don't you just give it to the one who needs the weapon? Well, it seems Claw. like even better if I just give it to everybody the way I said. Do you think that there's a good chance of you doing that? I'm very strong. I'm very good at throwing. Great. Oh, Wonderful. How, how well has this worked for you before in the past, Dave? 100%. Let's, okay. Bridget. Let's, you know call, <laughs> let's call this dexterity. What's You're your middle name, a, Bridget? Again, because this is a single action, you're, you're going to try and throw fucking know my name. everyone their <laughs> weapons simultaneously, and I'd like you to make it with disadvantage. So you're going to roll two twice, two dice, and take the lower number. 2d20, take the lower number. Okay. 17, 12. 12. Yeah. So you throw the weapons in various directions. None of them connect with the person you're trying to reach, but they are now scattered around the room. Thanks for that. Do any of them land on the catwalk? Nope. Okay. One of them definitely would have. For a 12? So now, no. All right. You just gave up your turn. That's great. That is your turn. All right. No, I get to do it. <laughs> that was your action. Move and action. Action done. All right. Bridget, your turn. Um, I'm going to Sacred Flame again. And that means that he needs to win, get 13 or higher. Uh, Which one? The hurt one or the not hurt one? The hurt one, so he only has one person to deal with, hopefully. Okay, and he needs to get a 13 or higher? Yep. He, that does not save. Good. So go ahead and All roll right. damage. That's a big fat one. That's a one, taking <laughs> one damage. So you summon the words of your holy divinity. You pray, you focus, and a matchstick-sized flame appears on this like lid of this guy's eye and he's like oh man that really hurts ow (laughs) that stings that stings a tremendous amount i want you to know that that really really stung i i cast my eyes upward and say valker in your fucking busy schedule could you see it in your like in your just wee bit of time to come down here and be any fucking good as a god 
<laughs> All right. So this, the guard who was just attacked is going to take another spear out from behind his back, and he is going to run double-handed and try and plunge his spear into Claw. So he is going to roll. That is a 17. Does that hit? But yes. doesn't he have to roll at disadvantage because... Oh, uh, he does? Uh, Thank you. That is a... 20. 13. <laughs> 13, does that hit? Well, one of my... If it's dodge, is it based on dexterity or armor it's class? It's your armor class. It's your armor class. Even though it's dodge? Yeah. Okay, so I have a 13. Yeah, so that hits, and he is going to do five points of damage to you. Wait, he did dodge, though. Ty goes to the... Spear That's what guy? he did last turn. Ty goes to the attacker, yes. Uh, but right. why is dodge based on oh, my armor it... class and not my dexterity? The dodge caused the disadvantage. Yeah. Yeah. When you dodge, all attack rolls made against you are with disadvantage. So he rolled a 14 and a 10. He has plus three to his attack, which ended him at a 13. And ties go to the attacker. So okay. he does five damage to you. Okay. So I am at one HP. Mm-hmm. <gasps> All right, and that is Wait, guard. you only had six HP? No, I have ten. I've been hit twice now. Oh. And that is yeah. Snedrick's turn again. All right. Yeah. I don't have anything that can help you. I don't have any kind of healing spell or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I'm going to have to try Ray of Frost again. It's not uh, All right. damaging. But... Go for it. Uh, uh, on the hurt guard or the unhurt guard? The hurt guard. Okay. Roll that d20. Uh, 14. Plus 5? Plus 5. Is 19. Yep, that hits. Roll a d8 for damage. 8. 8. So surprisingly enough, for whatever reason, ice bursts force from you. Just a column of glacier. And it actually, it feels like a full glacier is just spiraling out of your hands and it ejects so difficult that it actually bursts that guard, the one who's already injured, back through the window behind him and you can hear him sort of falling like, ah, that really hurt. <laughs> and you are left with one guard. All right, I just want to point out I've killed four of the five guards that have been killed and the other one I softened up for a claw. And you did that cage thing. That was pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It is Floon's turn. He reaches down towards his pants and then looks at you and goes, I told you it wasn't in my butt and reaches into his boot and pulls out a very ordinary looking wand. Um, it's sort of grayish, dark wood. It doesn't look anything special about it. And he casts Thunder Wave at the remaining guard. Good thing he waited until the second round. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Deus Ex. Floon Puff. No, it's just <laughs> Guard has the ability. <laughs> I'm sorry, was that a response? <laughs> sorry, God, you mumbled something? <laughs> nothing, nothing. You trailed off? Nothing. Just making dramatic tension. Find me. Uh, and he does not save, so he will do 2d8 damage. And knock it back 10 feet. 10 Which would knock him off the Knocks uh, him catwalk. off the platform, and he dies. So... Uh, Floon, you see Floon pull out this wand. He is not sure what to do with it. He sort of holds it with both hands, looks the other way, and goes, do your, your magic, good the magic. And he points it, and the, a giant eruption of thunder blasts out of the wand, slams this guard off of the balcony. He falls to the ground, dead. And Floon goes, look, I did it, fellow brigands. I've saved us all. Claw, get down here so I can heal you. Good work. <laughs> yeah, no you did all the real work there, man. Great job, Flume Poff. Also, everybody's weapons are spread out nicely. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna go pick up my weapon and wait for Claw to come down. You don't need to walk over to this pile where they started. You're welcome. All right. I'm going to cure wounds on Claw. Yeah, I jump down and get healed. As soon as you're done with that, I feel like we need to get the fuck on out of here because there's some crossbows, fellers. Uh, oh, now, fuck there, yeah, I agree. This cage is locked, but there's a door right here to management. I think that's going to take us back around to that main hall, don't y'all? Yep. Yes. That makes sense. Yep. Um, and before we do that, um, heal yourself for nine damage. Hey All right. You're back, back to full now, aren't you? Yep, to Claw full. is back to full. Uh, so yeah, you have, you have the spell. safety cage, which is closed. Make a perception check for me, Noah. Uh, perception. 
Um, I high five Bridget while that's going on. Nice. Wasn't there a way of opening it from the inside? I rolled a two on my, for my perception check. So. Never mind. Someone else make a. I everyone am going make to a... perception check. That is a. Sorry, I'm bad at math. That's 16. 12. Yep, there is a way to open it from the inside. All right. I'm going to go over and try to open it. Great. It opens. Shall we? Yeah. That's Quaker. All right. We're going to run out. That guy still has out. our espressos somewhere. Pass Greg. <laughs> I was uh, wondering about oh, that yeah. too. Oh, yeah. Pass Greg. All right. Um, so you... Hey, I'll tell you what, guys. I can, I know a great oh. way to distract Greg. You go right <laughs> ahead. Wait, did we come out the same door that we... The clipboard should be outside the door, right? The clipboard is outside the door. I grab the clipboard as we're running by. Mm-hmm. And we're we're trying to tell run us, out the building, tell right? Tell us your plan before you do it. We're trying to run out the building, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. I As we're running out, I just... Quickly give Greg his clipboard and be like, hey, man, here you go. You dropped this. It was back there as a distraction. Oh, thank you. Roll a deception check for me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> one minus one. <laughs> oh, that is. A- <laughs> Wait a minute. You're right. not supposed to be here. Hey, I heard you do <laughs> tricks with patting your head and rubbing uh, your belly. Shall we run? <laughs> yeah, let's run. I think we're gonna, gonna run. run. Uh, tell you what, make everyone make a dexterity saving throw. He's gonna take out his hammer and he's gonna smash. He's gonna sort of swing it at all four of you. Everyone make a dexterity Fuck saving me, throw. Fuck me, that's a nat one. Nat one. All right. Thirteen. Uh, f- Go ahead. Twenty plus two. Fourteen plus three. Oh, thirteen plus what? Plus what? Dexterity. Plus dexterity. Where's that? Uh, zero. Top left thirteen on. plus zero. All right, Bridget, you take. Eight points of bludgeoning <laughs> damage, but you do manage to get past him and out the door and run down the street Excellent. away from the thing. All right. All right. So you make it out the door, and Floon leads you to a small abandoned like building in the slums of the city. And then he says, I'm off to go get Blade Vigil to tell him about your... Your incredibly brave rescue of me. Will you wait here? Yeah, sure. Why yeah, not? Yeah, I sure. need to we'll heal right out. now. That sounds mm-hmm. fun. We could take I'm a long bleeding. rest of some kind. <laughs> yeah. Did you pick up your drugs <laughs> when you were leaving? <laughs> so yeah, I got all my shit. Okay, good. You can I have some? <laughs> I just want to point out, by the way, that we all bought an ounce of Snogsbane, so you guys have your own fucking drugs. <laughs> I give my Snogsbane to <laughs> Stendrick. I actually I didn't my, give him any money. I put my finger on my nose. Somebody else rolls up first. <laughs> <laughs> So you you sit in the corner, you wait for a while, uh, you sort of check this place out. It, you can you assume that this is an, a hideout or something that Blade is using to squat. There are cobwebs everywhere. The windows are boarded up. It, it's just generally run down. The only thing that isn't broken or covered in dust is a seven drawer armoire in the corner, which would look almost new. And uh, a couple minutes later, Floon and Blade enter the building and they're sort of speaking quietly amongst themselves. And Blade turns to the four of you and says, so let me get this straight. I sent the four of you to a bar across town to find a boy I thought had fallen asleep in his beer. And you staged a jailbreak from the headquarters of the deadliest and most dangerous gang of the city instead? What were you thinking? Nailed it. Shrug. I was mostly me that I I killed most of the people. The Flume Poff helped a lot, though. Mm-hmm. Pretty badass. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can't lie. It was pretty badass. Although, if I can remind you, and then he reaches into his pocket and pulls out the paper bird. I did give each of you a paper bird that is literally magic. All you had to do was say my name and it would have found me. And you could have told me that he was kidnapped by the most dangerous gang in the city. Yeah, you kind of left a l- pretty early. We didn't know how to find you. We didn't know any of that. You had nonsense. a magic bird. That's what I'm informing you now. You had a magic yeah, bird. Yeah, but now. could have found me. But here's the thing, though, Blade. I killed like four fucking guards like it was nobody's business. We really didn't need your help. So, I mean, I That's, appreciate that. Now, I but wouldn't say that. You hired us and we Look, did the job. You, we ain't going to come whining to you every time there's a bump in the road. Now, about that payment. Yep, yep, you rode your payment. And more importantly, 
I feel like I owe you the truth. Um, I know you've heard a little bit of this. Floon has told me some of your story, but uh, I wasn't serving as a bodyguard for young Floon here. Oh, surprise, fucking surprise. Yeah, we did perception checks and shit. We know. Yeah, and we immediately said you were lying before we even did that. Um, and you did great, by the way. You guys really solved the mystery. Do you want to say it, or should I just wait for you guys to expound you on what it is? No, just to make sure you know we know ahead. that you know what it is. I'll happened. say you, we all, we're all yep. in the know, but we'll just I'll just say yep. it just in case. This is going to be a great adventure. Anyways, <laughs> uh, there's something that I happen to have in my possession before I asked you um, what I'm about to ask you. <laughs> and then he sort of glares at Floon, who, who looks sheepish and... And Floon pulls out the, you know, just wand made out of dark colored wood. And now that you're close to it, Dave, Snedrick, and Bridget, because you're magic users, you can just feel a crazy amount of power radiating from this thing. As Blade says, this is the wand of seven parts. Mm. Well, part of it. Uh, so here's the thing. Long ago, seven powerful beings, uh, wizards, liches, giants, gods, each of them lent a piece of their power to, to save the world from something more terrible than any of them could have imagined. The, uh, the queen of chaos. Are we supposed to go like, Ooh. who's the queen of Thank chaos? Thank you for yeah, doing yeah. that. I, I just I wanted gonna, to just establish just a little sure. bit of dramatic tension. Uh, but now you called it out. You called out the moment. I feel like an asshole. She's a demon, just go by the way. Your things. I just feel like you could uh, participate. <laughs> uh, she's a demon. Uh, actually, many suspect the first demon. But uh, unlike other demonic entities, the queen of chaos, she doesn't want power or riches or anything, really. She just wants destruction and death. And I, I cannot stress this enough. She's not just evil. Uh, evil has a purpose. Evil has sanity. And she is far, far beyond that. It took hundreds of lives and no small doing. But luckily, thanks to this wand, the queen was banished. Banished by a spell that was supposed to suspend her indefinitely. And the wand of seven parts was broken apart and its pieces were scattered. So nobody could ever be tempted by its power. But uh, if the rumors I hear are true, the power of that spell is wearing down due to the part separation. And the Queen of Chaos is fighting back against the magic that binds her. And I got to tell you, if she returns to this world, it will mean the end of it. There are uh, seven different magical pieces that attach to this simple wooden oh. wand scattered all over the world. Great. And, um, well... I need your help to find them. All of them? Look, I have no right to ask you any more than you've already done. I mean, I asked you to find a kid in a bar, and you fought one of the toughest gangs in the city. Mostly but, I fought the toughest gang. Uh, Snedrick mostly fought them, but the four of you have unique talents that I believe will make assembling this item of power much easier. And if we can do this, if we can keep the Dark Queen banished... We could save countless lives. Look, I'll give you a couple of days to think about it. Um, this job is dangerous. And if you say no, nobody's going to blame you. But if you choose to help, I'll be back in a couple of days to introduce you to a friend of mine who is going to equip you for your journey. The, the good news is I, I think I've actually located the first part, but I need to be sure. Um, question, can, can we just like say piece number one to that paper bird and then just follow it? Uh, unfortunately, none of the pieces are human beings, so uh, that wouldn't work. But I like your thinking. They I probably like your thinking, have Dave. better names than piece number one to... Well, they I don't also know the name have... of the wand was the wand of seven parts. It's not very <laughs> creatively named so You don't far. think that's a you good know name? What? I nope, got nothing like better it? to do. I, I'm going to go along with this. This sounds like fun. I think I'm going to need a couple of days. Ditto. To all spend right. all that money you're about to give us for giving you your yeah, I feel like you're stalling guy. about the gold. Yeah, I definitely oh. need to heal up. Yeah, I, I almost forgot. I owe you. And then he reaches into his jacket and pulls out a giant bag of gold coins from inside his robe, and he drops it on the table in front of you. And he said, "We said a thousand gold pieces, right? I'm not super good at math." 
Yep. Yeah, we said yep. we said, a little, we said more right. than that. Thousand each. Yeah, that I believe plus, we said three hundred each, more. which would be twelve hundred. A thousand so. each, thousand or up. Sure. I was doing a kind of winky thing. I'm not. I'm not actually bad at math. I was doing an impressive thing. Oh, and uh, of course, I don't know if you remember. You've had a hectic couple of days, but I owe you these too. And he sets out a key for each of you. Uh, and he gestures around this dusty, broken down room and he goes, welcome to the squeaky wheel. Like I said, it's not much, but now it's yours. Uh, it's the next day and you're all making your first attempt at cleaning up the squeaky wheel. Snedrick, you're magically stacking the barrels. Claw, you're in the corner trying to see if you can jimmy open the armoire to see if there's anything valuable sure. inside. Bridget, you're cleaning the taps and generally checking the barrels, see if there's anything functional. Oh, or... I'm going to start a batch of gin. Excellent. You're starting a batch of gin. Yeah. Even Dave is begrudgingly sort of sweeping when a paper bird that you all now recognize to be a message from Blade soars in the window and settles on the table. And this is what it says. To my young adventuring friends, uh, my intel was correct, and I've managed to locate the first part of the wand as promised. I'll be back in a few days to equip you, but Bridget, it's time to go back to your god. Ooh, which one, though? And as you read this out loud, even though Claw has long given up on it, the first of the seven drawers pops open, seemingly all by itself. And inside, you find four greater portions of water breathing and a note that says claw i have a feeling you'll be needing these love grandma Uh, Dave, it's late. Everyone has cleaned the squeaky wheel as much as they're going to, and you head up to your room to get some rest. Accommodations aren't great, but you have to admit it's better than the grass hut that you lived in in Darkmoor Manor. You got a closet and a real feather bed. You even got a full-length mirror. And as you go to check yourself out in that mirror, you are greeted not by your reflection, but by the image of an older woman with dark red skin and horns wrapped in fabulous furs. And she says, Dave, honey, we gotta talk. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.